The fighting nerds have taken over the MMA community by storm, whether it's through their incredible fights inside the UFC, championship potential, or their trademark glasses, which have quickly become a defining characteristic beloved by the entirety of the MMA community. The Sao Paulo-based gym, which has birthed so many incredible fighters in 2024, has been silently working its way up for a very long time and has produced so many incredible fighters, and today we'll be ranking the four standout fighters who have taken the gym to new leaps and bounds and have made it the MMA household name that it is today. A reminder that this is all just my opinion and if you have your own ranking i would love to see it in the comment section down below and if you guys do enjoy this video do be sure to like comment and subscribe and that being said let's get into ranking the fighting nerds at number four we have mauricio rufi and he is the latest fighting nerd to have won inside the ufc octagon after his wildly entertaining fight versus james law on top at ufc 309 where he delivered one of the best striking performances in his young yet fruitful career thus far demonstrating an ability to go the distance contrary to his 10 finishes prior where he's defeated every opponent via ko leading up to this fight against James Law on top. Also prior to this in his UFC debut, the Sao Paulo lightweight wasted no time demonstrating some of the most extravagant and dynamic striking combinations when he faced Jamie Malarkey in his UFC debut at UFC 301 in Brazil, defeating the Australian veteran via KO in round one after showcasing his all-around striking game, demonstrating some unconventional and unorthodox striking in the process. Rufi also has a very similar and eerie resemblance to Conor McGregor in some shades of his striking, demonstrating his all-around confidence in his skill set and his ability to pull back and counter like he showed against James Lontop, and prior to this he had impressed Dana White with his great display on the Contender Series against Raymond Magomed Ali, getting the TKO in Round 3, and has ultimately become one of the most feared lightweights on the active roster, with few signing on the dotted line to fight him, being that some people are just afraid to fight somebody who has a lot of momentum at the current moment. Up next at number 3 we have Gene Silva, who has had quite an incredible 2024 since signing to the UFC in September of 2023 following his decision victory of Kevin Chino via Silva has quickly just turned into a featherweight to watch, demonstrating some incredible striking and measure in each of his three UFC victories thus far, with power that is just hard to come by at 145. He knocked out Weston Wilson in his UFC debut, then did the unthinkable in knocking out fan favorite Charles Jourdain at UFC 303 to become the first ever to deal the French Canadian a TKO or KO loss, and then wasted no time after turning around in just two to three weeks to step in and face Drew Dober at UFC Denver and shocked MMA fans alike showing his power not only translating up a weight class but also against one of the division's heaviest hitters and somebody who has very rarely been finished via TKO cutting and bruising Drew Dover even leaving him compromised at times and really showing fans that he is a force in the UFC at just 27 years of age eventually defeating Drew Dover via TKO via injury after he sustained a cut on his eye in the end of the fight. It'll be interesting to see what career move is next for Gene Silva given that he did miss weight at 140 against Jordan, but hopefully that's ironed out and I think he has a bright future in the UFC regardless of what weight division he fights at whether that be 155 or 145 though I do think his future is at 145 and he ultimately has a lot of options going forward at number two and this is where it might be a little controversial for some of the people looking at this video but honestly again this is just my opinion and I really do think number one and number two are interchangeable but at number two we have Kyle Boraglio one of the first, if not the first, fighting nerd to fight within the UFC, it wasn't always smooth sales for Boraglio, as after his first Dana White Contender Series outing versus Aaron Jeffrey, Dana White would ask more of Boraglio in terms of urgency in the octagon to get that finish, to come back and try again in a second showing on the Contender Series, as Kyle would be re-invited to compete for that contract and would eventually defeat Jesse Murray in his second fight on Contender Series within two minutes of round one via TKO to eventually earn his UFC contract. Boraglio has just been known as a guy who has had to really work his way within the UFC and his work ethic reflects that, boasting a perfect UFC run thus far with introductory wins over Gadzi Omar Gadziev, Armin Petrosian, and Mahmoud Muradov showing how good of a grappler he is before making a statement across his next four fights, defeating Mikhail Olajacek via submission, Abus Magomedov via unanimous decision, knocking out Paul Craig in round two, which has been proof to show how tough of a test Paul Craig is, especially in recent UFC memory, and his best win to date being an all-around dominant display over Jared Cannonier, despite the early adversities, Kyle Baraglio's work ethic and dominant display in the UFC has just simply carved him out as one of the best middleweights in the division and honestly one of the most exciting young up-and-comers as well as biggest threats for that title with number one contender Taksu. I also think he's one of the most well-rounded fighting nerds inside the UFC right now and I think there's going to be conversations soon about having Kyle Baraglio fight for that middleweight championship or a number one contender fight on the horizon very soon for the prospect out of South Paulo. 
And at number one, again, like I said, due to preference, I think this guy is just the number one in my personal opinion. I really just love watching him fight, and I think that while he might not be as well-rounded as Kyle Baraglio, he is probably the most exciting fighter in recent memory, just for myself personally, that I've just simply enjoyed watching in the UFC, whether it be from the Fighting Nerds or just any other gym, and that would have to be Carlos Protes. I think at number one, Protes, who has quickly just become one of the most beloved fighters in all of MMA, just due to his calm demeanor, love for cigarettes, and also just devastating finishes over some of the UFC's best welterweights, it becomes a no-brainer for myself that he's become simply my favorite fighting nerd to step in the UFC octagon. Since his last MMA loss, Carlos Protas has been on a tear, knocking out all but one of his opponents on his 11-fight win streak at the moment, leaving everyone in a wake of chaos, being one of the best strikers of the 2020s, having shades of Anderson Silva in his striking, utilizing his kicks beautifully, and that left hook is just pure money, showcasing a clear shift in his work ethic and overall quality, going from just being a 10-6 fighter prior to his last loss to 21 and 6 in just 5 years time. He's knocked out the likes of Mitch Ramirez, Trevin Giles, Charles Radke, Li Jingliang, and Neil Magny demonstrating true raw power and an ability to land in a clip and accuracy that makes him one of the scariest fighters at 170, making the Nightmare a fitting nickname for a fighter like Carlos Protes and making very few fighters want to sign on the dotted line to fight him given the threat that he possesses in the octagon. He's riding a momentum unlike ever before and his results have caught the eyes of the UFC and Dana White showing that there is big plans for Protes in his climb to welterweight gold and honestly I think rightfully so has just become one of the most entertaining personalities and more relatable personalities within the MMA fan base I can't wait to personally see what happens for Carlos Protes next but that being said he's got to be my number one fighter out of the fighting nerds at the moment just because of how much he's made watching fights fun for me in recent memory that being said with a gym full of young talent like the fighting nerds and in its prime like the fighting nerds you'd love to see a gym doing so incredible and it speaks to the potential of this gym in MMA with all the young fighters being under 31 years of age right now and I want to hear from you in the comments who your favorite fighting nerd is and if you did enjoy this video do be sure to like comment and subscribe as it helps me out a lot and it's been me Dan from Fight Wave guys I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great day